Good morning you beautiful peeps, my name is John, welcome to my channel. Today we have an upgraded part for the 144001 from WL Toys. This is the upgraded drive shaft, centre drive shaft and two differentials. How much of an upgrade is it? I don't know. The only information on the website was that it's made from alloy metal. So that helps a lot. So what I thought I would do is use my trusty hammer and see if it's any stronger than the standard parts. Um, now this one's not cheap, so this would be for those that are wishing to do speed runs with their 144001, or they just want to make their car as bulletproof as possible, which a lot of you out there do want to do. Um, let me just put that to one side and get this out for now. What comes in the pack is two differentials, center drive shaft with the very, very good looking metal center gear and obviously the pinion there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna fit the pinion today because that's not ever a weak point on these cars. Everything else is. So let me just move that out of the way for now. What you see here is we have the original on this side, as you can see, taken apart, lithium grease in there, and then on this side you have the new one, and let me show you inside because it's rather lovely, look at that, it's all metal, all metal, everything is metal from it now, obviously the casing here is the plastic, so what I thought we would do, as I said, is beat the crap out of it and see if there's any distinct difference. It's very early morning here. I'm trying to get this video done before they start banging next door. Um, okay, right, so there's obviously gonna be some loud banging now. I'll try and uh, dumb it down or lower the sound in editing. If we have a look at this side here, you can see I've actually already banged there and you can see that there is, but I wanted to show actually on camera that it will leave a mark, showing that it's a weaker metal, of course. So, I don't have a chisel, which is why I'm using a screwdriver. Obviously a chisel would be a lot easier to make a mark, but maybe that's not a good thing. Can we see in camera? Ready? Woo, missed it. So worried about putting it in camera. Well, I didn't think about where it's going to end up. Let's put it over this side so that I can avoid actually hitting the camera. Beat the crap! Anyway, as you can see, it does chew into it quite significantly. Okay, now let's get the upgraded alloy metal one. This one I actually haven't tested because I wanted to be either as shocked and surprised as you guys or disappointed. I'll tell you the price of this kit in a minute, okay? Move it over a bit so it doesn't do that. Okay, and as you can see, all it's done is scratched it. It has not in any way become indented. So that's a good sign, that's a good start. Love that. Right, Ooh, need to be careful I don't start mixing parts. One, two, three. I've lost one of the cone gears from there already. That's a good start, isn't it? Ah, oh, well, I've got spares. There we go. Right. Ah. This is the, obviously, the inner gear, the cone gear, as I call it. And that is the front side, back side of it. Yeah, okay. Let's have a wang. I'm obviously worried about hitting my camera, so I need to be a bit careful. 
beat, but anyway. Let's have a look. Ooh, blimey. Look at that. That's left a very big indentation on that one. Shows that it is a weaker metal for sure. And we have one of the new alloy metal. Not that the magnetic part is becoming annoying at all. Oh, come on! And one more for good luck. Again, a few scratches, but nothing there that is going to cause sort of wear and tear versus this one. There's the last one, that's good. So, I think we can definitely say that these are a weaker metal. Should, we, should I do these ones as well while we're here? No, it's all the same metal, isn't it? So, uh, without a doubt, this one we know is a lot uh, more likely to wear down because we've all got them and we know what happens to them. So let me get rid of this for now and I will put it back together. Now, the price for this kit is a very reasonable, depending <laughs> on your point of view, uh, 29.99 US dollars. But, of course, if it gives you that peace of mind and that extra strength, I don't think that's a bad price. Um, if I was doing speed runs, for sure, I would buy this kit as long as it performs like it should do. We'll find that out afterwards. Um, is it for everybody at that price? I don't think so, but for sure it's a lot stronger. That's without a shadow of a doubt. So let me just put it back together. I need my white, white lithium grease. Here we go. So it's the same principle as all of the other differentials. You have to get the cross in the right place of the two bars here. So if you see, you've got the two gashes taken out and it has to sit perfectly like that. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, I need to put this back together first. Can't forget the bearings either. Bearing goes there, that one goes there, and then this goes here. There was no thread lock on it, but in my opinion, the screw can't go anywhere. <sighs> of course it can, it can come out, but... Actually, I think they may have some of that gluey goopy stuff on it, but it came off relatively easy, so... Ow. Nice, okay. Now again, this kit did come with the shims in it, so I will include those again. So. go. This one, the lower one, has to be facing upwards. Oh. 
ఇన్స్పిరేషన్ If the banging starts, I will be stopping and just starting this video. I may have to finish it off tonight when they go home. So, let me, oops, let me bring this up. Sh oops, show you all. You've got the screw holes there. This obviously sits across like so. Making sure that you keep the, oops, the gash facing upwards. Okay, do not push it into uh, the grease yet because you need to see what you're doing, okay? So, number two. And again, this one will be now facing with the gash downwards. see that they're actually nicely sitting on top of each other so then look at that you can then push it down into position do not go turning it now because you can knock them back out of position okay I'm just gonna put a small smidgen back on not very much so that the gears have got room to move And then, oops, sorry about that. And then we line up the holes. Now, remember to do this in a cross bat pattern like I was told off for not doing. This, I believe, is a lot more important to do it that way with the metal um, casing than it is with the plastic one, in my opinion. But again, it's just my opinion. I am not an expert. Tighten, 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 tighten. I'm not doing it maximum here. It's just to make sure that it's sitting nicely. Oops. Cool. Cool, excellent, there we go. Make sure that you work the uh, grease in a little bit. It will sound a little bit grindy right at the start, but then it goes a lot smoother. Cool, excellent. Right, now, I have not done, ugh. I have not done this one yet, but obviously I will just quickly do this and then we will be back. Okay, welcome back. Now, that one has now also been greased. Uh, I don't know if I said it at the start, but they come with very little grease in it. Very, very little. So, it's definitely worthwhile doing this. So, here we have the car. Now, a couple of things to note. The car is brand new, never been driven at all, and I have taken off the shocks. I knew there was a second there, I had to say. I've just undone them at the top on all sides, as you can see, just to make this part of it a little bit easier. And you can see even these screws are undone just so that make it easier again. Now, you need to take, for those that haven't done this before, I know a lot of you out there have um, done this uh, procedure before, but I will go through it uh, like you've never done it before. It is eight screws at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight now these two can be quite hard to do because they also come uh, undone at the bottom so you need to hold a screwdriver here and go around the other side and undo it okay so let's get on Now, by undoing those eight screws, 
this now comes off and out of the way. Okay, two things you need to do. This upper cover needs to pop off, and then this little black dibby doop needs to pop out. Let me just put a screwdriver underneath and pop it up. Come on, don't be difficult. Okay, be difficult. Excuse me a moment, I just have to go and get that little black thing. Whoops. Cool, excellent. Now, both diffs at the front and the rear have six screws. I will show you them in detail. So again, if you've not done this before, you have two underneath here, one there, one there, and then the two at the front here. And at the rear you have the two there, one, two there, and then underneath the rear wing, just here, you have the last two. Do this systematically and you will have absolutely no problems at all with it. Now, you should be able to, in theory, pull one of these up, but mine seem pretty stuck, so I'm just gonna undo one of these. I'm undoing the steering connecting arm there. Be aware that underneath here is a small washer type item. Uh, let me get that out and then I will show you. It's one of these. Keep it safe because it has to go back in afterwards. So now you can see you can get to the, the two screws here. What I also recommend you doing, seeing as we're here anyway, is taking off the top arms here which will cause the drive shafts to come out and you need the drive shafts out anyway. So grab your bottle nose pliers, twist it and it should come on pop off like so and you see the drive shaft comes out and again come on really there we go okay why with that we'll do the rears same thing has to happen but the rear drive shafts or dog bones will actually fall out. You just take these out and put them to one side. Oh, excellente. Good, 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 good. Right, now. Only undo five at the minute, okay? And at the other end, actually, let's do the two rear ones that are a little bit more difficult. I got one of these kits because it was pointed out to me that it is an upgraded part and it should fit straight in if it's supposed to be upgraded it's supposed to be fitting perfectly if it does not fit perfectly obviously we will all see now and you can avoid buying it so all five screws are out that one and at the front so now we can uh, continue because we'll do it all in one swift go take that out and lift this off and out of the way I'll undo this one at the front. Pick it up and out of the way. Now, notice on the left-hand side, 
the big gear is facing you on the right hand side it's facing away so lift these up nice to see loads of grease but again there's none on there or on there which is pretty pointless isn't it and of course lift out this one this one can only go back in the same way but take note where the bearings go we have one bearing all the way at the top here two there can't move and these two go all the way down at the bottom now plop it back into position making sure that this bearing here goes in because then every other one should just sort of nicely fit in so at the front you have slots for the two bearings See how the two bearings fit there. Then at the rear, you have the slots again where the two bearings sit. Now, that one goes here, and the gear facing you goes here. Seems to fit nicely, doesn't it? That's very good to see. nice indeed so we have to put it all back together but we have to put some grease in okay now make sure it's actually on the gears squidge there and then the other end cool right just getting rid of that egg. Oh, just do that can't I cool right then so we're ready to put it back together. So that gets plopped there and the five screws put back in. Six, my apologies. You can see this is not a difficult job to do. It just needs to be done systematically. Sorry about that, that camera came up with an error again. Sandisk uh, memory cards, both of mine that are the class 10 super super duper ones that cost a lot of money are failing and they're overheating so that's really annoying. Uh, while we're here let's put the cover back in and of course the little stopper here make sure you push it into position nicely. There we go. Right, now the other side. That goes on. Very nice. Okay, while we're here. Oops. Silly of me. I was supposed to put this bar back across before I tighten that completely, so I'll just undo this a little bit. Get it over the top. There we go. So don't forget that this has to go underneath. And then it goes on the there's two holes here, as you can see. It goes on the outer one. That's really important or else your steering just will not work again. Nice. Okay, so that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. We put it back together. So turn this around. 
push it down. You know what? Some people will agree with this, some people will not, but we now have, rather than plastic to metal, we have metal to metal. So I am going to use a little bit of this. I know it's going to get contaminated with a bit of sand and whatnot along the way, but I will be monitoring it and I will be changing it if need be and cleaning it up. So now cover back on. And we have the eight screws back into position. Uh, at this end, let me just make sure that everything's lined up, yeah. At this end, sometimes this doesn't line up very well because it's sort of uh, flipped up. You just pull it back and get it in position, but on this car it seems fine. So, okay, there we go. Now, drive shaft in. There we go. And then you just plop the uh, tie rod back on. There we go. If it's too hard for you to actually physically put it on, you can use your grips again and just sort of click it on like that. But it shouldn't be too hard. Like so. And then the drive shafts at the rear. Make sure you put those back in. Nice. You turn one wheel, the other one should go the other way. Same as that one. Okay, so now we just have to put these back on. Suddenly thought I've not touched that uh, manual focus in the whole video. <laughs> I hope it's in focus. There we go, back together. Sounding sweet, right? Excellent. Okay, so what I think is best to do is we will get it out on the roof and give it a quick test run and then we will go somewhere and give it a bash, see how we get on. See you soon. Hello everybody and welcome to the 144001 with the upgraded uh, differential and drive shaft. Let me tell you a story. After I finished recording what you've just watched, uh, I had the car on the roof just to do a quick check and it turned out that there was a horrible, horrible grinding sound. So I had it back in the, uh, on the blue mat and I basically took it all apart and I believed it was the pinion gear and the main gear that were rubbing too hard, but of course you can't adjust them. So I went through the process for two hours of taking out the old motor, obviously all the, all the screws were stuck. Uh, put the uh, adjustable mount in after adjusting that and drilling that to make sure it fitted with this motor put it all back together to have exactly the same grinding sound. 
Then I had obviously the Eureka moment that was, of course, it's going to make more of a sound, a grinding sound, because you have a metal pinion hitting the metal drive gear, and whereas before, this gear on this side was plastic. Duh! So, moving swiftly on from the two, uh, two, two and a half hours of getting that all to work, uh, nothing else has been changed uh, except for the pinion. I did that pinion that came in the pack. I did end up putting that on. So, when it comes to testing this, there's no way to test it. Obviously, you can see now in the rest of this video that it works perfectly fine. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But the only way to know that this hardened, improved uh, differential and drive shaft, in fact, is better is three months, six down, months down the road. You've seen at the start of the video when I was beating the crap out of it, we know that the metal is stronger. So as long as it drives as it should, then it's a definite worthwhile upgrade. Anyway, let's get on and test it. Oh no! Telltale sign! <coughs> He's ripped it out! We need to find the drive shaft! Okay, let's get this fixed.
Hello everybody, just quick final thoughts on this upgrade kit. I'm still um, questioning the price at 29 US dollars for this upgrade kit. Is it worth it? I believe it is, but that's only if you use your uh, 144001 daily and you're worried about obviously the old diffs wearing out or you do speed runs then why not it's a, a great upgrade if the metal performs like what it's supposed to what it looks like it should and i'm not going to know that for several months anyway well then i do think it's worth it i'm sure this is just in my mind it felt to me like it was driving a little bit faster so that's probably just me. I don't know if that's anything to do with it being metal everywhere rather than the uh, the nylon plastic. So make up your own decisions whether you think it's worth it or not. Um, I'm glad I've got them, I'll be honest with you, and I'm glad I've got another set. I will be putting that in the other 144001 with the brushless setup to see how that goes. Okay, well hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye.